Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Trumpeter's brand new tool, 130 second scale MiG 29A Fulcrum. Now, as you can see, this is a monster box. This box is absolutely huge, so much so having trouble getting it all in the camera. Now, we've seen Trumpeter do a MiG 29 before, obviously, but the thing is, it was a K version, which is obviously the naval one not really the one you would ever think they would go for. Uh, and to be honest, it, the kit was one of the early Trumpeter ones. It was very much sort of old school tooling, the way Trumpeter used to do things. It wasn't particularly very nice. So it's really nice that they've stepped up immediately with a brand new tooled version of this one. Now, there's gonna be a few different flavors of this one coming out as we know. So we're gonna get, obviously, I think there's four, uh, there's three more to come, there's four in total with different versions of it. So this is the early one, this is the A as we can see down in here. So looking around the box, which is gonna be a little bit difficult for you guys, but as you can see, if I poke it like um, something like that, there we go. Uh, as you can see, it's gonna be quite big. It's gonna be uh, 30, well, basically four centimeters long. It's gonna be 35 centimeters wide. It's 310 parts, as you can see, down in there like that. But actually, that's pretty nice box art, as we can see on there like that. Running around the box, if we can get it in, uh, we've got some of the bings we can see. So we can see we've got a little bit of uh, metal undercarriage, pretty standard on this type of scales, a little bit of photo etch, some beautiful markings, down in there like that okay and then we've got your usual little bit of blurb as you can see them down on there as well talking about the actual weapons fit things like that as well and then up on these if we can fit them in uh your kit number for this one is 03223 and then on the other side we can see it over there in the russian markings just like that, and the weapons fit's gonna come with, which is pretty standard for the A version, so we've actually got you know, the normal sort of rocket pods, uh, bombs, fuel tanks, uh, and obviously the uh, limited uh, medium range weapon set for it, okay? So, in the box, I haven't looked in this at all. So, if I can get the lid off, get in, there we go. So, it's the first time I've actually looked in here. Straight away, you can see a huge, uh, be standing there like that. All right, so it is this normal way. We've got a little flap down there and everything else. So if we take this off first, okay, we'll um, seat this just over here for the moment. And then down in amongst those, you can actually see it's not too much in here. Uh, just some bags sort of thrown about. It's not as big as perhaps you would feel. And I'll be honest with you, seeing it like this, you are then beginning to wonder, with a little bit more thought, I could probably get this box half the height and probably a little bit smaller as well. Okay, so it does seem to be the box is a little bit oversized for what we were thinking with this one. Now, as I said, I am a little bit short on space, so what we'll do, I think, just pop this down here for the moment and we'll grab the parts from there. So, your instruction book and marking guides. We can see them down in there if we start in here first. So, usual thing. Uh, with them, they've got them sort of laid out on here. So we've got all the parts call out. We get a weight in there as well, which is a nice touch. Okay, and the various parts, looking around at the sprues, pretty much lots of them. Vinyl tires, as we know we was gonna get metal undercarriages, the photo etchings like that, pretty standard down in there. Okay, so usual thing, starting off into the cockpit. We're going in with the seat and the tub, adding all the parts down in there. We've got good side wall detail by the looks of it, and obviously plenty of uh, interesting things going down in there, wheel wells, things like that. So that's pretty nice, but well even. Upturned tub into the underside, pretty much standard for all these types of things. And then we've got the top half of the actual uh, cockpit going in there, being fitted onto the top as well. So nice touch with that one. And then, it's talking about straight away going in with the glass work and everything else. It looks like we've got a demister uh, a hose system as well running around uh, in there as well. We've got a couple of bits of photo etch to bend to go over the actual uh, the combing uh, around the instrument panel on the top there as well. So a nice touch. A lot of these I should imagine most of us would be doing that a little bit later. Cockpit obviously open and closed, things like that being fitted in there. The gun type being fitted on. And then we are going to see some modular type work on these as we would expect because of um, obviously we've got other versions of this coming out. Uh, the actual louver type doors on the tops of the wings obviously open and closed again nice little touch if you want to have it showing open and then things like pito tubes things like that the uh, IR tracker system uh, being fitted on there as well going in on the front but again little things you might want to do a little bit afterwards photo etch as well for the tops of these uh, for those backs of the ramp doors 
and then going into the main gear so obviously we've got uh, plastic and metal going together just to give it that bit of strength for its scale the wheels being put on things like that as we know it's vinyl tires two-sided hubs fair enough and i must admit a lot of people are frightened off about things about saying about um obviously vinyl tires and all things like that modern ones they're not like the old ones definitely they're a lot better than they used to be okay and then obviously with all the other parts going down in there as we can make out to make up the wheel well system and it strangely enough and this isn't a system i've seen before that entire system drops down okay so that does mean you are going to have to either make a different type of bracket fixing or you are going to have to have the gear in place when it's being fitted down into here which again is a surprising decision the way they've taken that one but um, that's what we've got um, and then obviously doing the underside putting various uh, lumps bumps things like that and then starting to work on the main gear wells as well as finishing off the nose wheel and then again putting on the actual side walls things like that down into the actual main gear wells okay and then obviously into the intakes again blowing doors or not i presume these are probably going to be photo etch are they it doesn't say actually i don't think they are but uh, having those in the closed position obviously if it's down on the ground it opens up as soon as it's running they close so you know it is that thing i think it's around about 120 knots they open up okay so usually on the ground they would be closed anyway okay and then down on there so we're adding lots of details down into this one we've got the actual nice little design here which these are going to then go in to make the actual uh scoop look down into it so you've got full intake down through the tops of the wings and going in there and then obviously we've got some engine detail down in the back here some of this framework which is going to make up the back of the wheel wells i imagine those are going down in there as well like that and then engine so we do have full engine detail in these as well so that's a very nice touch so hopefully we'll be able to display those open or closed again right the way through on those a very nice touch fitting those giant engines down into there just underneath okay covers obviously imagine a lot of us will probably have it shown open but it is a nice touch so that we can have it both ways as well so open or closed on there main gear doors being fitted on there the lights the various things again a few little lumps and bumps going underneath and then to sandwiching the top and bottom together. It seems a really odd way of doing it. So late in the build, then you sandwich it together. Okay, but there we go. That's what we're shown down in here. Again, another nice touch would be you could probably take off the covers, cut open these at the top to show that engine detail. So obviously from a maintenance point of view, you can gun down. So removing some of these covers would be a lovely little option to show some of that detail. Working down main gear again, exactly the same as the nose one. We've got a mixture of metal and styrene being put together speed brake being fitted down at the back um obviously open and close I, I always thought this thing couldn't open when it was on the ground but i could be wrong okay so showing it down in there nose weight is a plug-in to the nose again we've got beautiful engine detail being shown but we've got no radar at the front would have been a nice touch and i imagine the aftermarket people might pop along uh, and make us somewhat of an aftermarket radar to go in there but it is a shame that it is sort of devoid of that chaff and uh, flare buckets being fitted uh, over the actual uh, tops of the wing seams uh, being fitted down there and the last part of that speed brake and then you imagine as we are up into the tail area so separate rudders nice touch a couple of little sensors things like that being fitted onto those and those fit in and then tail planes again which looks a very small bracket holding on such a large item okay so that's being fitted on and then obviously we do have uh, your flaps and slats so you can actually have it in the power down position uh, or you can actually have them all folded in whichever way you want to do it so those being fitted on okay and then nice little touch as well we get the towing dolly for it as well so if you wanted to you could pop that together and we've got a boarding ladder as well another little nice touch with those uh, being fitted on and then imagine weapons and it is so choice of weapons whichever you want to go through on these particular clients as you can see and then again the standard loadout fit if you wanted to on the back like that the actual markings which is beautiful so we've got the standard sort of russian scheme again something a little bit colorful right the way down in there uh so we've got white one very nice if you want to go for that standard um you know obviously of russians markings you can fade it down you can play with it whichever way you wanted to but actually quite a fan of those we do like those ones down in there and we've got the hungarian one which is quite nice if you want to go for a more modern look um, and you want to go for something with the actual uh, the gray as well with the light gray underneath okay it's a personal choice if you want to do it in those particular markings but again very nice then the obligatory sheet which has got all your um, missiles and stencil data 
uh, color call outs for things like down in there. So you sort of standard fits uh, the RK60s, the little ones, and then we got R73s and then the longer range uh, R27s. So we got T's and AE versions and ER as well uh, off of the optical versions. Pylons, fuel tanks, rocket pods uh, being fitted on there just like that. So the kit. First of all, let's start off with this. It's Hasbro time, so it's a bit like you know getting your action figures out. So we just untwist it back in here, just to see what we're going on. Okay, so just be a little bit careful. Okay, so let's pop this out of the way. Okay. And then we'll just slip this nose very carefully off the front. Hopefully, no, it hasn't. All right. And then, so it's actually just in the locating tab. So if we just take top and bottom off. So let's start at the top. Straight off the bat, as you can see, this thing is a monster. It is quite big. Generally, though, the detail right the way over this seems to be quite nice. I can't see any real sink marks anywhere on this. We've got a couple of ejection points. So we've got one up here and we've got one over there as well which is fair enough because obviously this is one piece injection molded and then obviously we've got that detail on the inside as we can see it on there okay so all the ejector fins very nice and flush things like that and actually the plastic isn't very thick either this is quite thinly molded and, and stuff like that but if we have a bit of a closer look hopefully you can see we've got some nice details running down these all the way down and let's try and catch it in the light show some of this detail difficult when it's on there we go so as you can see we've got some great panel line detailing all those areas down in there like that that is really nice right the way down to the actual engines down here at the back okay as you can see it's very very nicely done and again because of the scale effect I think that's probably around right okay a lot of people they say oh it's overdone and all the rest of it don't forget, this isn't composites and all the rest of it. This is pretty old school type stuff. So uh, again, that's roughly how it would be. But generally, I have to say, that is very, very nicely done as well. So the underside, as you can see, is quite a large lump. And again, it looks quite chunky, some of this detail that we've actually got down in here. Uh, but generally, actually, I don't think that's too bad. So again, if we just start around the front, we get some light on this, there we go. You can see we've actually got some nice details on all of those and obviously we'll remove those bars but the wheel wells you can see they look a little bit chunky but actually I think they'll be okay and again some nice details down underneath here right the way through and again lovely texture and details to those wings you can see no problem with any of those whatsoever so again it's quite a nice thing and actually you know now I'm sort of getting a feel for it it's not massive massive this thing when it's going to be made up as we said is going to be what did they say total length 53 just trying to think what this one is so it's not going to be as big as my cutting mat it's going to be smaller than the cutting mat so it is going to fit on here so if you are looking at some type of diorama for it somewhere to keep it as long as you're looking under a2 yeah around about a2 size you're going to be absolutely fine it's going to fit in there but that is very very nice i must admit really do like that now, the bags. So, I think let's grab a handful of bags. We'll start to work our way through. So, over here, we have some of the engine details. Okay, so we've got a match pair, as you might imagine, down on here like that. And again, as soon as you look at this, no problem at all. Again, it's 30 second scale, so you're always gonna get that sort of chunky type feel to it. And in some ways, you need the actual uh, molding to be quite fine. That's where resin sort of, um, sort of overshadows ejection molding. Uh, and this is a classic example, because unfortunately, when you look at some of these engine details down on like this guy down in here, you can see it's just a, a little bit chunky. You'd like to see perhaps a little bit more detail down in there. Uh, but again, it's something that obviously you can take care of and you can pop in and add details to it. But again, as you can see on the engines, it's all the basics are right there and then you can add to it. So if you wanted to, you could strip a lot of these back off and replace them with some wire and things like that. The nozzles themselves, as you can see, they're very nicely done. 
Obviously inside they are completely devoid on the outer one because you won't because this one fits in so really you're more worried about what's going on with this guy and again no centre seam down in there no problems with that at all it's cleverly moulded uh, and stuff like that. The compressor blades okay there's nothing thing but they're quite sharp so that's quite a nice touch so yeah generally a good start so we'll look at pylons in a moment okay so this is intakes and various things on the go like this as i say it's a, a big old sprue as you can see right the way through with this on both sides and nicely detailed again just looking around it all the ejector pins are not on anywhere that is going to be seen at all which is another pleasant touch so as you can see down on here we've actually got the uh this is the insides uh, of the actual engines that will be on display and sometimes you'll get ejector pins in there no problem with that at all on both sides clean crisp nice detail on those just like that so that's very very nice indeed and then if I just move the camera out just a fraction just a little bit tight that one okay but then again as you work your way up you can see we've got some nice really sharp details down on those that really is very nice I'm making your way up have to move back to get you all in and again intakes clean no problem with any of that at all obviously we've got the actual speed brake detail the inside of the wheel wells we've got no ejector pins in there at all okay and it is the bugbear with a lot of manufacturers now who tend to go over the top with ejector pins trumpeter and hobby boss really are nailing this one down now very very nice some great detail down in here in these intake doors but generally no problem even down on quite complex molding parts we've got no sink marks no problems with any of this at all it really is very nicely done okay tailplanes and rudders as we've got them here we'll make it through as we go through them okay so the actual uh, tailplanes as you can see pretty much tiny little bit of flash on there unusual i must admit i'm only saying it because i can but tiny little bit of flash on there generally though we've got the static charges on these maybe uh, it'd be a better idea to have those afterwards because they're bound to go pinging off before you get there but again you see the we can catch it in the light you see we've got some great detail a riveting detail uh, and very fine recessed panel lining it's clean crisp it's all even right the way over and on these as well really very very nicely done indeed no problem and then even on these ones on the inside you can see we've got great riveting detail down in these so no problem with those and again ejector pins smooth right down very flush incredibly flush probably the best ones i've seen to date okay so next bag up okay the all important tails the the actual rudder sets and everything else like that separately done but again you can see what is well known on MIGs and you know to be honest it is the Russian thing riveting and that's why I love it so much the riveting you can do so much with the weathering and things like that and they are very very nicely riveted and panelled and everything else so that means it's going to be great for weathering these but again very nicely moulded fantastic no sign of any problems We've got nice distance ones down in here so you've got the correct spread right the way through but again really very nicely moulded all of that okay so and also it does look like it's not over complicated this isn't one of those kits that has just got hundreds of parts for the sake of it and everything else but again you're looking at that that's absolutely lovely very very nicely done with all of those down on there but again these are the the full length uh, intake ones from the tops of the wings that actually go through the top of the body and then down into there again i've never seen that done before in a kit that's really nice all the little air scoops and statics and things like that on here all the small parts beautifully molded no problem with these at all and actually although this seems a little bit chunky i think by the time a little bit of a wash quick dry brush really put some life in some of these it'll be absolutely fantastic right the way down to the boarding ladder which i know is a gimmick but really it's very nice touch to have it in there and then obviously we've got the um the little planes down the bottom and everything down in there that's actually all very nice and down even in here as you can see this is inside that speed brake some nice details down in there very nicely done and again inside the wheels uh the actual bay doors and things like that nicely done no problem with any of that whatsoever okay we love that that's really nice okay weapons are uh, technically normally we don't look at weapons but i've heard they've had a remake 
so they've had a little bit of a makeover so this may be the newer ones so we can just have a look and it looks like they are they're just looking a lot more tasty okay and again really when you look at them extremely nicely done it's a nice detail nice level of detail Again, these big 27s, things like that down in here, very nice. We've got so all the little lines and the designation parts, all of them, and everything else like that. And even the smaller ones down in here, no problem with those at all. That is actually very nice. So we've got a match pair, two of those. Okay, pylons. Okay, so match pair again. Okay, so down in the, the actual pylon ones, as you can see, pretty standard. But you can see we do have some nice details again it's not screaming out with tons of tiny details that are in your face but when you catch them in the light actually they are all there it's just very finely done this one again it looks to you know you see it like this it looks like it's just big and chunky but again you get past that you catch it in the light you can see all the recessed details all the actual panel lining and riveting detail really to liven these up again on all these panels so although they look quite chunky and just plasticky look a little bit closer because the, the actual panel line detailing is very very fine okay so the bags keep coming okay so down in here we've got uh, the actual uh, tops of the engines I believe and the intakes now the intakes do have ejector pins down in here because you're not going to see any of it whatsoever because they're all going to be covered up so we're not worried about it so we're really just looking at the details and again very fine line but we do have a mold seam running right down here which is unfortunate because until now this was a perfect kit but now that's got it okay it's only going to be a light sanding job to get rid of it and even using things like a deburring tool will take it out with no problem at all it's just unfortunate it's still got it and this one hopefully you can see it you see it's quite flashy so it's a little bit like this was an afterthought Perhaps not as much care taken, but again, it is this sort of multi-injection part. Don't forget, you've got one coming in this way, one coming in from the sides, and then it all comes apart to release it out of the mold. Very difficult to mold these things, but saying that, this one has hardly got any. This one's got a lot more, so if they can do it on one side, why not the other? But again, very nicely done. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, interesting part, we've got the nose and the cockpit detail in this one as we can see down in here so we've got that nose It'd be interesting to see if it is the right shape because it's always seems the thing with mix that people tend to get the nose wrong but the cockpit very bland not a lot really going down in here at the moment but then obviously it's going to be added all by this so actually this detail for the cockpit looks quite sharp quite crisp i'm sure there'll be color photo etch ones popping down the lines very very soon by our friends over at edard but for the moment that is very adequate no problems with those whatsoever that's quite nice okay more weapons as we've got down in here so here we've got rocket pods and again another match pair if we get one over the other I'll try and get both out we're making a pile okay so as you can see pretty nice down in there nicely opened up all of these are open and you can see daylight all through them so that's a really nice touch and again when you first look at this you think they're just tubes and that but actually take a closer look and we've got full riveting and panel line detail the only thing is we've got quite a lot of flash on this you probably see it down the end here quite a lot of flash going down on the back back but again i'm being picky because i can on this one and then again these guys up here beautifully detailed very very nice on all of those as well so some nice details there okay we have it's all going to fall over this one's been done twice okay. slaps 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 flaps and ailerons okay as we've got down on here again nicely done no problem ejector pins are all flat out of the way no problems at all and again basic but very nicely detailed on these as you can see we've got some nice bits going running around on all of these details so it's all pretty good again these static dischargers although i think they're great they're molded in you just know they're never going to make it past week one of your build okay so down in here we have another box with all the little goodies and all the little parts and you're just thinking yeah okay you're wondering where your hundreds of hundred pound plus kit has gone 
this is where it all is, okay? Right, so uh, it's going to be clear parts, that's clear parts, that's clear parts. Um, okay, so what have we got? I'm just trying to work all this out. Okay, let's work our way through some of these. Okay, so the seat. Okay, so the actual ejector seat, again, you might want to pop down the aftermarket route, probably be the way to do it. And pick yourself up a nice resin 30 second one, I think that would be the way to go. Or get yourself something like a seatbelt set. Okay, a steel one would be absolutely fantastic in something like this. It is practical, it will work, it's just that it's going to be one of those focal points for the actual kit, so you might want to think about aftermarket on that one. The control stick, quite nicely done as well, no problem with any of those whatsoever. Okay, right, <coughs> this took my eye. So these are the giant sort of louver blowing doors on the top of that fuselage section above the intake, okay, which actually work as the primary intake during takeoff and landing to avoid fog being sucked in or you can have it closed, depending if you want it in flight, uh, but obviously at slower speeds, everything blows in, okay, and it sucks more air in like that. Then, obviously, this is quite a nice touch as well. This is the combing on top of the instrument panel. That's actually very nice with that heat grain, the veining on there and all the rest of it. We've got a demisting bar around on here. We've got the pitot tube being fitted in, some of the other little parts as well. So actually, that's very nice. And this is that all important box behind the pilot's head. Uh, with all the sort of circuit breakers and everything as you know on those as well okay quite important on the mig then we've got just down in here we've got the actual framework around the canopy so again we've got a couple of scoops aerial things like that this will be kit specific to the a model okay because they sort of changed it around a little bit but it's funny because this part here isn't actually attached it's just sort of showing there very nice very clean crisp I think by the time the other parts go in there, that will be fine. Pop that back in there. Okay, so over here we've got the wheels, hubs, and the gear type part. So again, match pair again. And as you can see down on here, we've got some of the actual activators. But more importantly, we've got the hubs and some of the other parts and things like that down on there. Pretty plain. I wouldn't be surprised if an aftermarket resin wheel set didn't appear for this very, very soon. Okay, so if it did, maybe an option to go down if you don't like using vinyl tyres, things like that. Giant fuel tank, so this is that big old fuel tank that sits right between those intakes. Again, a little bit of flash on it. This is all raised, which it is, don't forget. It's supposed to be raised because it actually is. So it's beaded weld lines on these and everything else like that. And there's the nose of it, the tail system goes up to the back to fuel feed. Absolutely lovely, beautiful work on that. Very nice and moulded. Okay, so we'll just pop that back in there as well. Okay, this is the towing eye. I don't think really we need to get this out. As you can see, this is the towing dolly for the actual uh, one itself. To be honest, although it's it's quite basic, I think, again, by the time it's had a paint, a little bit of weathering, a little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of wash on there, I think that'll look absolutely fantastic. Okay, more missiles. Uh, so down there, we've got the little Archer missiles uh, and some more of the bigger ones as well, the medium range ones. Very nicely done so on those. Okay, so, um, okay, down in here, obviously for weapons, things like that. This is all the seeker heads and stuff like that you might imagine for all the missiles in one bag. Okay, and we've got more. So down in here, we've got the heads up display lights, landing lights, um, and all the, the little clear parts for the actual aircraft itself. Okay, a little bit of photo etch. So again, we've got the framework for the heads up display, some of those grills, handles, mirror, stuff like that. And we've got more framework that's gonna go around the actual canopy as well, just to liven all those out with the other couple of mirrors for the side. All right, that's quite a nice touch. And then we've got rubber wheels, which, you know, again, these have got a little bit of flash on them, things like that. They are what they are. They're a lot better than they used to be, just depending on how well they fit to the hub and making sure they've got a nice fit on there. That'll be absolutely fine. Okay, metal gear. Again, it's gonna be most of it is buried away, but what is seen, as you can see, doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, so that'll be okay. But it gives a nice little bit of strength to the actual uh, undercarriage set. This is the nose weight, which as we know, is just a cone of metal, so we won't bother getting that out. Clear parts we'll definitely have a look at though. Okay, so let me just slip in here. 
Okay. So, little tip out the end, as we know, this is where it actually fits for the actual uh, seeker, for the uh, infrared type seeker. We've got the bars, these aren't center seams, these are actually bars that run up through the canopy, which is absolutely fine, and there is no center seam, and that actually looks pretty good to me. No problem with that at all, okay? And then the main one, Again, don't forget, this is part canopy, part frame. I'm not sure how they're doing this. We're going to have to check on that back on there. But it looks like all-piece canopy. And so the plastic one is going to go to the inside, which is a nice touch then. So that way you can paint up the inner part and then the outer part completely as a separate. So you don't have to work about worry about painting the inside of the canopy because it's got a full plastic one. But again, no centre seam in there whatsoever. Beautifully clear. No problem with that whatsoever. Okay, last up. We've got the decals, which, okay, they're never going to be the strongest point with any type of trumpeter kit. So we just slip. So first of all, we've got your weapons ones, and it is the usual type of way of doing it. It's just blur. It's just lines to give that generic type look to it, which is unfortunate, but it is something that always seems to be done. Uh, so obviously this is just the weapon ones, and then we've got the cockpit type stuff down there. Again, I personally, I'll probably be looking for a color photo etch set for the actual cockpit. I think it'll really liven that up, but that can work. It is practical. Uh, it is all in one. So if you wanted to lay that down and get that to sink in, you could do it actually that way as well. And last up, the main markings. So we've got those Hungarian ones at the top, okay, right the way through. They say you've only got the two options, and again, they're not the best decals on the planet. We've got the Russian ones down in here, and I'll be honest with you, unless they're trying to go for that faded look, it doesn't look particularly nice, all right? So again, I think I'd be looking more down the aftermarket route than using these. I think you'll get away with it, but when you're spending this amount of money and about this amount of energy and time onto something, shirking because a set of 15 quid decals at the end of it really isn't the way to go. You know, okay, you'd expect them to be good out of the kit, but it's always going to be the weak spot with them. But generally, we're okay. Everything else seems to be all right. We do have writing down in some of these, but some of it is blur. Okay, so we just have to take its uh, word for it. So there we go. It is a monster kit. I am now covered in bags everywhere. It's a lot of money. I think this kit retails for over £100. It's just one of those things where, you know, if you want a MiG-29, you will love it. If you're not into MiGs, you're probably going to bypass this particular kit because it's a big and it is a lot of money. But from a kit point of view, it's beautifully done. Apart from the intake thing, this is my only downside to the kit with these actual intakes. Uh, having this seam line, which is pretty big and nasty down in there, it's still not going to be a biggie to get rid of it. It's just going to take a little bit of time to work that one out. But the way the rest of the kit goes together, different ways of doing it. Not a fan of the nose wheel being put in so early. I would like to do all these things after painting. But generally, I think you can do little workarounds with it to make them do it afterwards. But there we go. That is Trumpeter's brand new tool, 132nd MiG-29A Fulcrum. Thank you.